Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I want to talk about the best sets and the best parallels to buy. All the time, I have people ask me, what's the best set to target? What is the right parallel to target? It's even more confusing because of how many sets are being made, how many parallels are being made. But in this video, I want to break down my top five sets and parallels that I personally look to buy myself if I'm buying a card of that player. Because every player has their own interesting circumstance when they're printed, some players have significantly less rookies, some players have significantly more rookies. This can change slightly, but overall, these are kind of what I feel like are the best in my collection methods. One thing I want to point out, this is non-autographed cards. We're looking at autographs in a different list, in a different video. These are just the non-autographed, they're the numbered parallels, they're the rare short prints, things like that. Not autographs in this video, that will be its own unique video. There's an Instagram account called Ephus Pitch. She does an Ephus underscore pitch. She does a really good job of breaking down what he thought were the top 10. And I wanted to make a video on what I thought were the top five, just so that way people, when they ask me this question, I can say, target these cards. And top of that, a lot of my audience is new or coming back to the hobby and it's a very different landscape than it was 20 30 years ago so I want to give you some insight on what I would personally buy so to start out I would look at non tops chrome gold and lower refractors gold and lower meaning gold orange red try to stick to those colors in particular and try to stick to these sets these are the sets that I personally would buy I would buy tops finest flashback refractors especially the gold and lower because I like those a lot the base refractors and tops finest flashbacks are actually numbered to 50 they're just not serial numbered but there's only 50 produced at least that's what it has been in the past. Then I would say Top's Finest is the next one you'd want to target. And you can see Top's Finest is here. It's a legacy brand from decades ago. We had that since 1993. Hey, happy 30th birthday, Top's Finest. Bowman Chrome is the next set you can see right here from this Julio Rodriguez Bowman Chrome Refractor. And Bowman's Best. He doesn't have a Bowman's Best rookie yet, but those are the four sets. If I had to pick an order, I would personally do Top's Finest, then Bowman Chrome, and then Top's Finest Flashbacks, then Bowman's Best. But all four, you can target a gold, orange, red from those sets, and you're going to be doing pretty good in my opinion. Parallels, like we already discussed, I like gold refractors, I like orange refractors, number 25, and I like red refractors, number five. If you can get a super refractor, that's great, but that's expensive and difficult to do, but those are the other parallels I'd buy. So that was number seven. I know I said top five, but I gave a few extra because it was really difficult. At number six, we have non-clear and black flagship parallels, and not all parallels are created the same. These are the parallels that I personally think have value moving forward, particularly the gold. Even though the gold is actually more common than every other parallel produced by tops that's serial numbered they're a classic from 2001 even further there's been tops gold flagship like the Derek Jeter 1993 rookie card there's a gold version it wasn't serial numbered they started serial numbering those cards in 2001 but that's continued and those cards command a premium after that I would say the pink the Mother's Day pink is right here that's a good one to target the blue the camo and the Independence Day the pink and the blue are numbered to 50 the camo is a 25 and the Independence Day is numbered to 76 because America and on top of that the Independence Day is some of the best parallels in in sets like 2018 and 2019 when it wasn't just lame stars around the border they used to be really really impressive these lame stars around the border are less impressive than these three parallels down here in my opinion but for some sets in some years they're really really cool and worth targeting less desirable parallels are the red foil green foil orange foil advanced stats and vintage stock i personally wouldn't target those as much because they don't look cool they're not as obvious like the vintage stock and advanced stats they look like regular cards it's just they're numbered on the back because the vintage stock has a different material that is printed on in the advanced stats literally has like different stats on the back. So those are what I wouldn't target and the foils have never really caught on yet. They could, but overall these are the non-black and clear parallels. Those are different parallels we'll talk about later that I would target. At number five, we have black and gold heritage refractors. Heritage is another set that's been around for a very long time and they have gorgeous refractors. The gold refractors are numbered to five while the black refractors are numbered to like however many years it was since the previous set. So just like the black flagship parallel, this increases by one every year. So hopefully in a hundred years, they're still worth as much money as they are now, but there will be more of them. But overall, these are more cards that I personally would look to buy and I do have some of them and I love those cards. They're really collectible by player collectors and rookie collectors. At number Number four, we have Topps Chrome Sapphire and Parallels. The reason I said Sapphire and Parallels is because I actually think the Sapphire flagship card is pretty desirable, especially in a PSA 10 or a BGS 10 or a high grade, just because there's not that many made and they're pretty condition sensitive when it comes to like centering and things like in newer sets like 2022 Topps Chrome Sapphire and previous sets there weren't as many produced, particularly in 2016 and 17 and 18, there's less than 300 made for each of the base cards those specific years. In 19, the print runs went way up, but even if there's only a thousand or a few 
few thousand of them. They're much more short printed than the regular Topps Chrome. There's now so many different Topps Chrome variations that it's confusing. I would only target one variation of Topps Chrome and that's Topps Chrome Sapphire. I wouldn't target Ben Baller. I wouldn't target Topps Chrome Black. I would just target this one set if you're looking for a, a legacy type product. The parallels I would target is the base, the gold, and the purple, and the red out of five. The purple's out of 10, the gold's out of 50. This is a new parallel. Back in 2016, the golds were numbered to five, but this is new moving forward, so we'll see that now on every single set, but the purple's numbered to 10, and the red is numbered to five. Then we have at number three, Topps Chrome numbered refractors. In the past, I would have put Topps Chrome Sapphire above Topps Chrome, but I think because there's so many bastardized versions of Topps Chrome out there, I think that the regular Topps Chrome is going to have the most value. And I would just say focus on these specific parallels, the blue at a 150, the gold at a 50, the orange at a 25, and the red at a five, and the super fractor, of course, if you can find it. And I would ignore personally these parallels, non-regular tops chrome and sapphire sets like we already discussed, wave parallels like the red waves, the orange waves, the gold waves, they're great cards, but I personally would rather have the traditional flagship color. They usually go for significantly more. But like we discussed again, non-traditional color like the greens, they've been around for a while, but greens have never had the same power as other sets, the magentas, the magenta speckles, these new parallels that are being introduced, they will not have the same value as these four flagship images because these images have been around a very long time. So those are what I would target myself. At number two, we have Topps flagship and Topps chrome short prints and super short prints, primarily super short prints. This Juan Soto Gatorade bath is his super short print. This in a BGS 9.5 just went for 3,600 bucks. And this card, if you've ever seen it before, I'd be surprised for a majority of you, you probably have not seen that card. But this is a Bryce Harper rookie super short print of him sliding into second base. You probably didn't know it existed and that's great because that means there's not many of them out there and those that do exist, they go for a good amount of money. I think the last one went for two to $3,000 because people look for this card and they can't find it. So that's what I would buy. Personally, this is a personal opinion, Topps flagship and Topps chrome super short prints. I wouldn't buy other sets. If you're gonna target other sets, you can look at Stadium Club, you can look at Opening Day, but they don't go for nearly as much as this set in particular from Series 1, Series 2, an update, and then also Topps chrome the main set and at number one we have black and clear parallels so the clear parallels not introduced until 2014 the black parallel was introduced in 2003 and for that purpose they have been around for a very long time they were numbered to 52 the first year and every year we have one more added on so in Mookie Betts case it was numbered to 63 I believe and then in Mike Trout's case it was 60 for example and so forth these black parallels always go for a premium and the clear parallels number to 10 are the next best thing outside of the one of one and the clear parallels were introduced in 2014 and I own this Mookie rookie card and I love this card and overall they're worth a ton because they're so rare and so hard to find. So that is my list of non autographed rookie cards that I would personally target and I know everybody has their own opinion and that's great. Those are just my opinions on what I would buy for long term value and what could hold the most value. But I do want to say I'm not telling you to buy these cards. Go out find your own opportunities what you think is a good buy but that's what I personally target. But other than that thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.